Love is eternal, sacred light, free from the shackles of time. Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, and our friend. Amen. Cheyenne, Wyoming, where I grew up, is a military town. It houses F.B. Warren Air Force Base, one of the few bases in the country without an airstrip. All it deals with are nuclear missiles, intercontinental ballistic missiles, also known as ICBMs. And having a large population in your town whose lives and whose livelihoods revolve around mutually assured destruction, around making sure somebody can press the button that ends all life as we know it. It leads to some strange things. Specifically, it leads to some strange bumper stickers. For example, ICBM, thermonuclear destruction. Peace by superior firepower. And peace by overwhelming firepower. Well, today, as we find ourselves between Jesus and John, between Peter and, the, and Cornelius, I want to talk to you about peace. Today, as we celebrate Christ's baptism and reaffirm our own baptismal calling as daughters and sons of the living God, I want to talk to you about peace. But I don't want to talk to you about peace by superior firepower. And I don't want to talk to you about peace by overwhelming firepower. No. I want to borrow a phrase from Peter's preaching in the book of Acts and talking to you, talk to you about peace by Jesus. Yes, like Peter, I want to talk to you about peace by Jesus. Let us pray. Lord God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Lord God, may the preacher decrease that you might increase. Amen. John has been building up our anticipation. He has been building up our expectation. He has been rattling off insults towards Pharisees and towards Sadducees. He has described the particular moment in history that he finds himself in as a time of fire and of flame, a time at which a sharp axe awaits the moment where it may cut down and chop up. Here, it seems, John the Baptist is channeling Jonathan Edwards, that famous preacher of the sermon Sinners in the Hand of an Angry God, who preached the God who holds you over the pit of hell, much as one holds a spider, or some loathsome insect over the fire, abhors you, and is dreadfully provoked. His wrath towards you burns like fire. He looks upon you as worthy of nothing else but to be cast into the fire. He is of purer eyes than to bear to have you in his sight. You are ten thousand times more abominable in his eye than the most hateful, venomous serpent is to our eyes. John ends his description of the one who is to come by saying, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. In short, John the Baptist is putting people on notice that the wicked ways of, that the world is, is about to end. The one coming will bring peace by fire and axe, flame and winnowing forth. Peace by superior firepower. Peace by overwhelming firepower. But the next word. The next words that come in the Gospel of Matthew are some of the most gracious in the
in the entirety of Scripture. Then Jesus came. Then came Jesus and then came peace by Jesus. Peace by Jesus. For if you read along with me, you will see John's first words, pardon, Jesus' first words, rather, to Job. The first words he speaks in the Gospel according to Matthew are, let it be so. He is saying, let it be so to John, who is looking with, for help and looking for strength, not humility. He was looking for one who would come baptizing in bold and fiery ways. But instead, instead the one who was coming after him was asking to be baptized. The one who was coming after him was saying calmly and with assurance that comes from that kind of call, let it be. Let it be. Let it be. And truthfully, this should not surprise us. This fits right into the character of Jesus. When his disciples looked for a war horse, an ICBM of that time, they find a dog. When the disciples look in awe at the temple, when they are overawed, by its superior firepower, Jesus responds, Eh, all those rocks will fall down soon anyway. When they expect him to take out the Roman Empire, he instead is executed by them. Because I'm not talking about peace by overwhelming firepower, but peace by Jesus. And if it was only after John allows for this peace, only after he allows for the humility of Jesus, it is only then, after that, that he gets to see the firework display that he wanted to see in the first place. Only then do the heavens open up and he witnesses the Holy Spirit like a dove alight upon him. Yes, peace by Jesus involves the opening of heaven and the proclamation that you are a child of God. Because you see, peace by Jesus didn't stop with today's gospel reading. It continues on with Peter's proclamation in the book of Acts to Cornelius and his family. It goes on with Jesus doing good. I kind of like that phrase, don't you? Doing good. Plain and simple peace provided by Jesus' practice of doing good. But it doesn't stop there either. Jesus healed the afflicted and is raised from the dead. And that too, that too would be enough for us. That would be a place to stop. Jesus' peace begins with a humble baptism punctuated by heaven opening, the Holy Spirit coming down and the proclamation of who He is. It would be enough, it would be enough if He simply did good. It would be enough, it would be peace by Jesus. Death and resurrection too would be enough. It would be peace by Jesus. But peace by Jesus does not stop there. Jesus continues to move with his people, causing them to preach that he is judge of the living and judge of the dead. Now I know judge seems like a less than peaceful vocation. A judge is a figure that can draw fear out of many people. It reminds us of Jonathan Edwards' angry God burning us up like spiders. For that matter, John too, John the Baptist, that is, was looking for a judge as well. John too 
but looking for somebody to charge and to condemn. So it's all the more amazing, all the more amazing to contemplate that we find peace in Jesus. Because it is through Jesus Christ's name that we receive forgiveness of sin. We find peace by Jesus because the judge of the living and the dead is also our public defender. The public defender of the living and the dead is the same as the judge. Think about that crazy courtroom where the judge comes down from his bench to stand up and defend us. Down from his bench to forgive us. And that would certainly be enough. That would be peace by Jesus. But that isn't it. It doesn't stop there. After Peter finishes speaking in the book of Acts, the Holy Spirit comes down just as the heavens open for Jesus to proclaim him Son of God. There, as Peter finishes preaching, the heavens open and the Holy Spirit makes a similar proclamation, alighting upon, of all people, non-Jews, Gentiles, in such a powerful way that none can say anything. They can say nothing except they too ought to be baptized. And that would be enough, certainly. The expansion of the kingdom and the family of God to include non-Jews would be peace by Jesus. But it doesn't stop there. Peace by Jesus is here. Right here today. Today in baptism you experience peace by Jesus. Today. Today when confronted with peace by overwhelming firepower and expectations about God and God's judgment. Know that the judge is on your side and has washed you clean of your sins with the waters of baptism. Because today, there is peace by Jesus. Today, today you are marked with the cross of a man so humble who went to death, and a man so powerful that he came back to do the same for us. Because today, there is peace by Jesus. Today, Today you are marked with the calling to follow a man so good that he healed and preached good news no matter what. Because today there is peace by Jesus. Today, today the heavens open up and open up for all. No matter who you are or where you're from or even what you have been through. Because today... Today there is peace by Jesus. Today, today the Holy Spirit proclaims you daughters and sons of the living God. Because today, today there is peace by Jesus. Today there is peace by Jesus. Amen and hallelujah. Have you heard the one about the duck? There is a duck.